good morning, everybody. And welcome to the Children's Book Council of Australia Book of the Year Awards. I've met some of you, but for those of you whom I don't know, my name's Margot Hillel, and I'm the chair of the Children's Book Council of Australia, and your master, or whatever, of ceremonies today, MC. I'm delighted to be here today and thank the Queensland branch for, of the CBCA for their invitation. Today we're very fortunate to open the awards with a traditional welcome to country from the songwoman and lawwoman of the Turrbal people, the original inhabitants of the Brisbane area, and the Dipple people of the Sunshine Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, Maruchi Baramba. Uh, 
when we are afraid of the health of the, um, um, yeah, that's how to be afraid of being Australian, I suppose. The Thank you, Songwoman Maruchi, for such a memorable welcome. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we gather today, the Turuvu people, and pay my respects to their elders past and present and the emerging leaders of the future. I'd like to thank the State Library of Queensland for their ongoing partnership with the CBCA and for this lovely venue to, that they've shared with us today. And welcome to the CBCA National Board members who are with us from the Northern Territory, from Sydney, from Melbourne, as I am myself, and from uh, the uh, ACT. And to all the Book of the Year Award judges, fresh from reading the hundreds of children's books submitted for these awards, and a warm welcome to the authors, illustrators, and publishers here today and watching via the live stream and of course, a particular welcome to the children in the audience who are the readers for all those books. Today's awards are the highlight of a very busy year for the CBCA. We're an organisation of volunteers dedicated to supporting and celebrating Australian children's literature. We work to engage the community and to acknowledge the excellence in children's books in this country. As an example of the many ways we approach our ABC, uh, CBCA mission, there, here in Queensland, the local branch recently ran their statewide Reader's Cup. 
For this event, readers organise themselves into school teams to read a list of books and compete with other school teams at regional events. Readers, Readers' Cup challenges the students to read widely and work as a team and provides the opportunity to meet other book-loving students. And later today, you'll see some of these keen Readers' Cup competitors among our guest announcers. As I'm sure you all know, today's award ceremony also marks the start of the CBCA Book Week. Over the next week, schools, libraries, booksellers, authors, illustrators, parents, grandparents, and of course, children across the country will find their own way to celebrate Australian children's literature. It's a week when children come to school dressed as their favourite story characters, and librarians keep, uh, create displays from the most unlikely materials. This year, the theme is Find Your Treasure, with delightful artwork by Anna Walker set to inspire all manner of creative displays. And you'll have seen that on, on all sorts of um, uh, bits and pieces that we've, we've got in, in here today and, uh, and, on, and on our merchandise as well. And for the first time in eight years, we're really delighted to stage our awards back here in Queensland for the, uh, as I say, the first time in eight years. Which brings me to our guest speaker, who hasn't had to travel very far today at all. Vicki MacDonald is the Chief Executive Officer and State Librarian here at the State Library of Queensland. She oversees the day-to-day -day operations of a lively digital age 21st century library while protecting and curating a legacy which began in 1896. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vicki MacDonald. Goomba Daru, Goomba Nani Gia Nindu, which is, hello, it's good to see you here. And that's in Burragum, which is the traditional language of the community that I grew up on the Darling Downs. But let me begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather and pay respects to the ancestors who came before them. Here at State Library, we're located on Kirilpa Point, which is a traditional meeting, gathering and sharing place for Aboriginal people. And we proudly continue that tradition here today and every day of the year. I'd also like to thank Auntie Marucci for the beautiful Welcome to Country. And it's always a very moving experience to hear her sing as well. I'd also like to acknowledge the CBA, CBCA Book of the Year Award judges, the National CBCA board members, Professor Margaret Hillel, our um, MC for today, and, and also our audience who are live streaming as well. So down on the Knowledge Walk, but also through our websites as well. So welcome everybody to our um, State Library of Queensland. If you are walking on the sand flats where the curlews feed when the tide has gone out, you may notice what appears to be a small brown pebble about the size of a penny. Touch it with a stick and you see it move. You will know you have found the spider crab. The legends of Mooney Jal and the spider crab are surprising, sometimes hidden treasures. One can be found on the soft beaches of Fraser Island and the other on the bookshelves of the State Library of Queensland. The book by Wilf Reeves is a collection of stories told to Aboriginal children by Butchler elders. According to researcher Dr Juliet O'Connor, this collection of stories, which was published in 1964, is the earliest children's book to be written and illustrated by the Aboriginal people to whom they belonged. And as the just dust jacket tells you, these stories belong to all Australian children and they've been handed down since the first time. They were told to children before Blinky Bill and long before Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie. The Children's Book Council of Australia Book of the Year Awards is all about unearthing and celebrating literary gems, which is why this year's theme, Find Your Treasure, is so appropriate. The awards acknowledge the visceral importance of the stories to a child. They are an escape from homework, a chance to go on an adventure, or even a refuge. A colleague once told me about a five-year-old boy who often went to his school without shoes and without lunch, but yet he had read every Harry Potter book that was in print. And I suspect that everyone here today can remember their favourite book as a child and how it inhabited their inner and often more magical world at the time. And for the stories, for the students here rather, after you've helped unpack the dishwasher and perhaps finished your maths homework, I hope that an adventure awaits you in the pages of a good book. Because more than anything, books help us to escape the everyday. 
and the CBCA helps guide us to the gems and the treasures that illuminate our world. Their stamp of approval means something to authors, illustrators and readers alike. The CBCA Book of the Year Awards has been Australia's peak children's literature awards for more than 70 years. And as Margot said, the CBCA is a not-for-profit, volunteer-run organisation that encourages and recognises excellence in children's literature. It helps engage the wider Australian community, demonstrating the, book, the importance of books and reading for children. And it's really wonderful to welcome the awards back to Brisbane. As Margot said, it's eight years since we've hosted them here in Queensland, so we're really excited to be hosting them here today in Queensland. And as you can imagine, many of us here at State Library, books are our first love. When we opened our doors back in 1902, books and writing had primacy. At the first Board of Trustees meeting in 1896, it was noted that libraries would draw children from the streets and prevent the spread of larrikinism. <laughs> and they, importantly, they would give an opportunity ought to be afforded to men to get access to books in a place away from the trouble of the little disturbances at home so, so that they could study the great works of history, poetry and science. So, a hundred years later, our aspirations extend well beyond the naughty little urchins and the need to protect men from the washing up. <laughs> so, these days, you're more likely to find a friendly robot demonstrating the joys of coding than a reformed larrikin in our libraries. Or you may find a giant frog from our popular First Five Forever program singing about the importance of early literacy. There are also many library card holders in isolated corners of our state completing life-enhancing online courses than you would find men studying poetry today, although we do hope that that still happens. But State Library partners with a thriving network of more than 320 public libraries and Indigenous knowledge centres throughout Queensland, and their importance cannot be overstated. One of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is quality education and books, literacy and libraries are certainly central to that aspiration. Libraries are digitally focused community hubs where people come to create, share knowledge and answers and learn as well. But at our very core is a love of books and writing, whether it's an old war diary or even a notation on a, on a sepia photograph. Here at State Library, we seek to inspire possibilities through knowledge, stories and creativity and our rare children's books are certainly a great place to be inspired. We have several Kate Greenaway editions from the 1870s and 1880s, and her book, Under the Window, was not only influential in children's book illustration and page design, which had the unique use of white space at the time, but it was in also incredibly popular. So much so that the old fashioned clothing worn by characters have come back into fashion. The Kate Greenaway Medal is another distinguished children's book award and the first Australian to win the international honour was Queensland illustrator Gregory Rogers for Way Home. So you might be surprised to learn about our intriguing collection of pop-up books which are, are part of our Australian Library of Art and you can visit that on level four of our building. The complex use of rivets and levers can be seen in, seen in one of our rare books from 1891 titled Look at Me, a new movable toy book by Lothar Meckendorfer. The Germans' illustrator's book work was a great advance on the existing tab books, making multiple movements possible with one scene. So all the books that I've mentioned, and there's quite a few that I've mentioned, can be found here at the State Library. Some you can borrow and some you can view in person here or you can look at on our website. This beautiful building and all our online platforms are full of such treasures and we certainly encourage you to explore them. So many like Mooney Sand Crab may well be hiding in plain sight, just waiting for you to come and bring them to life. But best of all, blessed of luck to everyone of today's shortlisters, authors and illustrators, and your contribution to the literary world is very valued and appreciated. And once again, I thank you for coming along to the State Library of Queensland. We're really proud to be part of the celebrations here today. So I'll hand back to Professor Martha Hill. Thank you. Thank you. And I just give you a very small token to say thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vicky, for a warm, welcoming and inspiring speech filled with, with gems. And uh, the library obviously is too, as she, she's uh, described to us. 
Now, music's not really the CBCA's core business, but this year we had a special case put to us by a group of Year 9 students at Mary MacKillop College. The girls have written an original song for younger children and adapted it to the CBCA Book Week, and they're here today to perform for us. Please welcome the students of Mary MacKillop College with their song, Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover. <laughs> wonderful tailor-made little interlude in our proceedings and this is for your teacher who might like to come and collect it later. So this year marks, um, as Vicky said, the 72nd year of the uh, CBC Book of the Year Awards. When these awards were first presented in 1946, as many of you probably know, not because you're that old, but because I've said this before. The winners received a camellia if they were female and a handshake if they were male. 
The prize money we have to award today is uh, thanks to the generosity of so many donors to the CBCA Awards Foundation. And of course, we're always happy to accept contributions to that foundation, particularly uh, locally for the campaign to raise $5,000 in memory of Queensland author and illustrator, Narelle Oliver. And if anyone here would like to make a donation, there will be forms available after the event. Just ask one of our volunteers, and I think they'll also be in the bookshop. Many of Australia's children's publishers, authors and illustrators have been major donors to the foundation and we acknowledge and thank any of those who are represented here today. As I said earlier, we at the CBCA, uh, C CBCA sorry, are pleased to note that sales of Australian children's books have grown over the past five years from 25% to over 30% of the total book sales in this country. And this testifies Australia's children's books are alive and well, and these awards look forward to playing a continuing role in that good health. We've come a long way from camellias. Thanks to the CBCA Awards Foundation, prizes for the CBCA Book of the Year Awards are now funded in perpetuity. And now to the business of the day, the awards announcement. The CBCA Book of the Year Awards, and I am keeping a, an eye on the clock because we can't do this till 12, and that clock's fast. <laughs> the CBCA Book of the Year Awards celebrate the creators. However, Australian children's literature would be nowhere without the readers. And today we're delighted to have a group of keen young readers to announce the winner in honour books. So if I could ask Vicky to come back to the stage too, please, to present the awards. And um, first, the category is the CBCA Book of the Year for Older Readers. And this category is for outstanding books for young people aged between 13 and 18. And these readers require a degree of maturity to appreciate the themes and scope of emotional involvement. The Older Year Reader Award will be announced by Blessy Matthew from Our Ladies College, Annalee. Blessy, please join us on the stage. <clears throat> and just before we get to what's well, not really the witching hour, but um, <laughs> almost, uh, I just wanted to ask Blessy, what the Reader's Cup has meant to you and how it works, because there'll be some people here who might not know. Um, so I went to the Reader's Cup last year. So what happens basically is you have a list of books. I think it's under 10 books, maybe five books, something will turn that. Anyways, and you read them. And then when you get to Reader's Cup, you have to answer a series of questions on the book. And the team with the most points is the one that ends up winning. Yeah. And why did you join? Join in? Because I like reading. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a good thing to say. <laughs> Particularly today. And so have you managed to find time to read any of the um, shortlisted older readers? And do you have a favourite you'd like to talk about? I, I have read a few of them and I do have a favourite and that is The Secret Science of Magic by Melissa Keel. And do I have to say why? <laughs> Um, I'm I, sure Melissa, who's here, would love to hear why. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I like it because I find I find I found I found it so relatable. Um, Sophia, the main character, she's in grade 12. I'm in grade 10, but it's like she's, we're facing the same situation. What do we do with life after high school? And um, I have like this favorite line from the book. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something along the lines of, for every mathematician that is successful, there's one that's a failure. And it's sad, but uh, I found it so powerful, yeah. Thank you, Blessy. Thank you very much. Now, don't go away. Don't go away because you've got the very important task of reading out the older reader shortlist, please. And then you've got your script. Um, the shortlist is Charlie Archbold for Mally Boys, published by Wakefield Press, Callie Black for In the Dark Spaces, published by Hardy Grant Egmont, Kath Crowley, Simone Howell, and Fiona Wood for Take Three Girls, published by Payne Macmillan, Australia, Pip Harry for Because of You, published by the University of Queensland Press, 
Melissa Keel for The Secret Science of Magic, published by Hardy Grant Egmont, and Vicki Wakefield for Ballad for a Mad Girl, published by Text Publishing. And the award for honor book goes to Charlie Archbold for Mally Boys, published by Wakefield Press. And the second award for Honor Book goes to Callie Black for In the Dark Spaces, published by Hardy Grant Egmont. And the winner of, of Book of the Year, Older Readers, is Kath Crowley, Simone Howell, and Fiona Wood for Take Three Girls, published by Penn Macmillan Australia. Now, were you all three going to come and... Yes. <laughs> I just wasn't sure if you were all doing it or not. Yes, please. Good, good. Um, so it's such an honour um, that Take Three Girls has been chosen for Book of the Year Old Readers for 2018. And the thing that I'm most proud about is this book, one of the things I'm proud about is that it's about the importance of friendship, of being resilient and of being yourself. Um, and so it's perfect that um, I've written with Fiona and Simone, two of my closest friends. I wouldn't have written this book without them, two wonderful friends, collaborators, writers and humans. And every time I read your work, I want to be a better writer. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone on the shortlist. It's hard to write a book. It's hard in terms of craft, it's hard to pay the bills while you're doing it and hard to keep the faith in yourself. And I've loved every book on the shortlist and they don't, they've become really important books for me and they don't happen without sacrifice. And I'd like to thank the Children's Book Council of Australia. You encourage young people to read and you support writers. Thank you to the judges. What an incredibly difficult task to choose a shortlist and then a winner from the talent we have in Australia. Thanks to Catherine Drayton, my wonderful agent, Cheryl Pienka, who adopted me for Take Three Girls. Thanks to Claire Craig, um, my wonderful publisher, and Ali Laveau and Georgia Douglas. Thanks to the whole Macmillan team. And lastly, thanks to my family and my friends, to my mum, and thanks to Michael, my husband. Um, okay. So I'd just like to say thank you to the CBCA and the judges for your time and um, consideration. It's very nice to be considered. <laughs> um, Take Three Girls was a delight to write, and uh, for me the delight was really due to the company, Kath and Fiona. Um, you're both such stars, <laughs> and I'm very proud to know you and to have created this book with you. Um, thanks to Claire Craig, lovely publisher, um, our friends at Pam McMillan, Melita Granger, who contributed thoughtful and helpful notes on an early draft of the novel. Um, thank you to Cheryl Pentka and Jill Grimberg, Agents Par Excellence, and to my family, Mark and Williford, for making me laugh and keeping me real, um, and to the readers and booksellers and teachers and librarians and bloggers and all in the YA community, my respect and gratitude. Cheers. Sorry, there's a tiny bit of repetition here. As with the book, we found getting together to write our speech a little bit tricky. We did have a meeting, but uh, anyway, look, thank you so much to the Children's Book Council of Australia and to the Older Reader category judges. Uh, it's such an honour to win the award and to be listed alongside our amazing colleagues on the Notables and the Shortlist. Uh, congratulations to everybody. And for me, it's an unexpected delight to be accepting this award for the third time. I'm still pinching myself about the first time, so <laughs> unbelievable. Thanks so much to Claire Craig, our intrepid publisher, uh, who remained calm when a number of very optimistic early deadlines slipped on by. <laughs> 
and to Ali Laveau for another brilliant edit, to Georgia Douglas and the whole team at Macmillan, and we share this award with you. Um, we hope that Take Three Girls will prompt some of the many conversations we need to have at home, in classrooms and between friends about gender politics, about respect, about the sort of world we want to live in and how we might construct it. Uh, I couldn't do this work without the support of my lovely family. I thank them. Uh, thank you to the early readers, Amali Foster, uh, Julie Landvot and Reba Nelson for their invaluable feedback. Thank you, Cheryl Pientica, my ideal agent. Thank you, as always, to the teachers, the librarians, and the booksellers who put our books into the hands of readers. And thanks to the readers themselves. And I want to thank the quiet readers, as well as the readers who are out and about and blogging and vlogging and podcasting and Instagramming and sharing their love of reading. Uh, we love you all and really appreciate you all. And But finally, and most of all, I want to thank my beautiful, wonderful collaborators, fellow feminists, co-conspirators, inspirational women, dear friends, Kath Crowley and Simone Howell. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure those of us who've been thanked three times are very grateful for the, <laughs> for the repetition. So thank you all very much. And isn't it exciting to have a book with uh, three creators winning the award this year? So our next award is for younger readers. The category is for readers uh, aged between 8 and 12 years old. And our awards announcer is Scarlett Roberts. Scarlett, will you come and join us? Thank you. From West End State School. Scarlett remembers the sensation of being swept away to other places when she first learned to read. Her dreams to be an author herself and to have one of her own books entered in these awards one day. So welcome, Scarlett. She's going to introduce the Younger Readers Award. The short list for the Younger Readers Awards are Peter Carnivus for The Elephant, published by the University of Queensland Press, <laughs> Bren McDibble for How to Be, published by Allen and Unwin, <laughs> Martine Murray for Henrietta and the Perfect Night, published by Allen and Unwin, <laughs> Martine Murray for Marsh and Me, published by Text Publishing, Emily Rodder for The Shop at Hooper's Bend, published by the HarperCollins Publishers. <laughs> and Lisa Shanahan for The Grand Genius Summer of Henry Hooper, published by Alan and Unwin. <laughs> the, and the award for Honor Book goes to Martine Murray <laughs> for Marsh and Me, published by Tex Publishing. And the second honour award goes to Ma sorry. Yeah. Martine Murray for Hen No, no. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's Henrietta right. and the Perfect Night, published by Alan and Unwin. And the winner of the book of the year for younger readers is Bren McDibble for How to Be, published by Alan and Unwin. Yes. So Margaret uh, from Alan and Unwin is going to speak on behalf of our winner. Uh, Brent sends her apologies, but she has um, sent her something explaining why she can't be here. Thank you so much for selecting How To Be from an amazing lineup of junior fiction. I'm sorry I can't be there. My husband is halfway through major surgery to reconnect all the bone fragments in his leg in a Darwin hospital. And it seems there's just no easy way to get in and out of Darwin quickly or cheaply unless you use the flying doctor service, <laughs> like he did. 
and they only deal with health emergencies, not literary emergencies. <laughs> so many years I've admired this award and the books it has highlighted, but I've never dreamed it could happen to me. Thank you, CBCA, for all the work that you do to raise the profile of children's books. And thank you, Susanna Chambers and all the team at Allen and Unwin for your support and care through the publishing process, and to Joe Hunt for a great cover. Thanks also to my fellow writers for your generosity of friendship and support over the years. We're all about finding your treasure this year. So my treasure and my very great pride is that in an age of platforms, celebrities and huge marketing budgets, I focused all my attention on the prose and writing with heart. And a book that entered the market quietly still managed to rise amid very fine fiction to win this award. This book was such a joy to write. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Now, we do have a video of Bren saying uh, some of that herself, which we'll put up on the website for those of you who'd like to, to see that. And you can see why uh, we didn't uh, have the pleasure of Bren's, co Bren's company today. So, our next category then is for early childhood. These are books suitable in uh, content and style for pre-readers and beginning readers. Our announcer is Emily Hodge from Year 8 at St Andon's Anglican Girls School in Corinda. Emily enjoys reading books to her young niece and says, I like that young niece, um, given that Emily herself is in Year 8. Um, <laughs> And says Mem Fox is, I'm Australian too, transported both of them to vibrant new worlds. So welcome, Emily. Um, the shortlist for the early childhood category is Michael Jared Bauer and illustrator Chrissy Krebs for Rodney Loses It, published by Omnibus Books. Bill Cummings and illustrator Shane DeVries for Boy, published by Scholastic Australia. <laughs> Mem Fox and illustrator Ronaji Gosh for I'm Australian Too, published by Omnibus Books. <laughs> Patrick Guest and illustrator Jonathan Bentley for The Second Sky, published by Little Hair. Alison Lester for The Very Noisy Baby, published by Affirm Press. And Lisa Shanahan, an illustrator, Binny for Hark, It's Me, Ruby Lee, published by Hachette, Australia. And the award for honour book goes to Alison Lester for The Very Noisy Baby, published by Affirm Press. And the award for honour book goes to Lisa Shanahan and illustrator Binny for Hark It's Me, Ruby Lee, published by Hachette Estrella. And the winner of the Book of the Year Early Childhood is Michael Jarabauer and illustrator Chrissy Krebs for Rodney Loses It. Now, we have a video from Michael, but Chrissy is going to speak first. Oh, okay, thank you. I thought I was going to steal all his glory, but um, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> uh, thank you for this wonderful award. 
The long and shortlisted notables are an amazing collection of books. And just to be a part of this list was such an honour alone. I'm very humbled that our book has been chosen to receive this award. Rodney Loses It was a labour of love. I believe everyone sees a little bit of Rodney within themselves at times. Um, thank you, Michael Gerard Bauer, for allowing me to create your wonderful story in picture form. Thank you, Omnibus, and thank you to our brilliant editor, Claire Halifax, who is a joy to work with. Thank you to my husband, Jerome, who has always been my pillar of support, and thank you to the CBCA judges, librarians and bookstore owners who have shown so much support for our book. What I believe makes Rodney Loses It so appealing is the fact that we can all lose it from time to time. Frustration is a human condition. We are not infallible to it. Yet often we do get shame for feeling frustrated or angry. Rodney shows us that there are ways of releasing our frustrated emotions that won't cause harm to others and can be rather humorous. Good on you, Rodney. And finally, we all know it's true. Rodney Rabbit and Penny Pen is still a better love story than Twilight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Now, if we could just have the video from Michael, please. For the last time, I didn't take your pen, I didn't see your pen, I don't know where your pen is, and how this stuff keeps disappearing all the time. I found all your other things. Even found your yo-yo. That was difficult. Why don't you put things where you know they're going to... Oh. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Michael Jared Bauer here. I'm really sorry and, and disappointed that I can't be there with you. Um, as I'm recording this, or as you're listening to it, uh, I'll be finishing a week of school visits in Melbourne. So I think I'm... A, present talking to a few hundred year eights about Don't Call Me Ishmael, bookings that were made a long time ago before I knew there was someone else, somewhere else I would love to be. Um, look, I am absolutely thrilled and honoured and slightly stunned uh, to receive this wonderful award. Thank you uh, CBCA for making the awards possible and thank you for all the work you do in supporting and promoting children's literature uh, in Australia. Thank you to the judges. Uh, not just those judges whose wisdom resulted uh, in this award and their perception and their sense of irony to give a book called Rodney Loses It a chance of winning it. Uh, thanks to all the judges who dedicate their time and their effort and volunteer to do these jobs. Uh, a really difficult, painful and almost impossible process, I think, to try to choose one book from so many wonderful books. Uh, congratulations to all the authors and illustrators, particularly those on the early childhood shortlist. Absolute honour to be on a shelf uh, with your wonderful stories and to be included amongst some absolute legends of picture book writing uh, in Australia. Uh, no doubt all your books will win uh, a place in the hearts and the minds of, of many children across Australia. Uh, thank you Scholastic Australia Omnibus Books uh, for supporting me my whole career right from the very first book in 2004, The, the Running Man. Uh, in particular, uh, thank you to Claire Halifax, my publisher at Omnibus. Claire, thank you so much for loving Rodney uh, right from the start, for uh, taking him under your wing, for somehow keeping that slightly obnoxious rabbit grounded and under control and see him, seeing him carefully through the whole publishing process to the, the final uh, wonderful finished uh, product. Uh, thank you for a promise you made in an email that you're going to go illustrator hunting and try to find the perfect illustrator who had the comedic touch and the ability to do expressions and, and talent to bring uh, Rodney uh, to life. And uh, therefore, thank you uh, to that perfect illustrator. Uh, thank you to Chrissy Krebs. Uh, Chrissy, I know you're there and I know that uh, you sent me an email and when you found out that I wouldn't be there, that you said it was your opportunity to hog the glory uh, on the day. I really hope that you are doing that and taking advantage of that because uh, you deserve it. Uh, they say there's no show without punch, or there's no picture book without pictures, and there's no award for Rodney uh, without Chrissy. Uh, thank you so much uh, for bringing Rodney so hilariously to life. Some, thank you for somehow making him uh, more endearing 
and more relatable than he has any right to be given his uh, terrible behaviour. I love that we got to share this journey together. Uh, I love uh, that we get to share this award uh, together, one that I feel we both equally deserve. It feels a lot, Chrissy, to me like uh, we're old friends. I think we share the same sense of humour, which is a worrying thing in itself. Um, so it's weird for me to think that I'll be meeting you for the very first time in person at the State Library of Queensland tomorrow, uh, something that I'm really looking forward to. But I'd just like to let you know that there could be a huge hug involved, uh, so definitely be prepared. My final thing I'd like to say is thank you to all the teachers out there and all the teacher librarians. Uh, thank you for being my favourite people. Thank you for doing the most important job in the world uh, without near enough praise, recognition or pay. Thanks a lot. That's all I've got to say. I'll let you get back to your ceremony. Lovely to talk to you and cheers everyone. Thanks very much. Thank you, Michael, for taking the trouble to, to record that for us to enjoy today. So our next book of the year award is for the picture book. This is for outstanding books in which the text and illustrations achieve artistic and literary unity and the story theme or concept is enhanced and unified by the illustrations. Picture books can be for any age. Our announcer today is Zachary Dunn from the Anglican Church Grammar School who's become a CBCA favourite as he also contributed a film for our shortlist award ceremony. And you'll have seen those films uh, running on the big screen in the foyer. If you haven't seen them, you're in for a treat. They are wonderful. So welcome, Zach. Uh, the shortlist for this year is Anna Lee, text by Carol Wilkinson for Ten Pound Palm, published by Walker Books. <laughs> Freya Blackwood for The Great Rabbit Chase, published by Scholastic Australia. <laughs> Philip Bunting for Mopoke, published by Omnibus Books. Gwyn Perkins for A Walk in the Bush, published by Affirm Press. <laughs> Anne Spudvillis for Swan Lake, published by Alan and Unwin. <laughs> Anna Walker for Florette, published by Pingan Random House Australia. <laughs> the first award for Honour Book goes to Freya Blackwood for The Great Rabbit Chase. Uh, the second award for Honour Book goes to Philip Bunting for Mopoke. And the winner for Best Picture Book of the Year is Gwyn Perkins for A Walk in the Bush, published by a firm press. And could we, Zach, just ask for the publisher from a firm too? Um, could the publisher from a firm press come up here as well, please? Ah. Thanks, Zach. That's all good.
Well, wear that. <coughs> Professor Mark, Marco Hillel, Judges of the Children's Book Council of Australia, <coughs> CBCA members, authors, illustrators and guests. This is the highlight of my career. <coughs> I'm honoured to be among fellow shortlisted nominees and thrilled to accept this award, award for Picture Book of the Year, particularly as this category places emphasis and importance on the ability of the illustration to depict or to be a vital part of the storytelling. <coughs> Take away the words and the story sh still should be able to be understood and that was always my aim. I noticed while reading to my grandchildren that they were taking in the images of, from both open pages at the same time, so this influenced my design. A walk in the bush, double page spreads are generally meant to be understood as one picture. Their layouts helping to follow the sequence and understand the story. I'm also particularly pleased to get away with my granddad jokes. <laughs> Humour is a great way to teach and quirky humour is remembered longer. These are jokes for kids that adults get. I would like to thank, there are some, uh, there are a, a list of important people that have helped me and um, I'd like to, they need to be named. <coughs> My friend, uh, illustrator Janine Dawson, um, urged me to uh, submit my drawings to a group called the ASA, the Australian Society of Authors, where they have a, a website that, encourage, that allows illustrators and authors to get together. Um, th that was terrific. To, I illustrated five books. Then they, the ASA, in conjunction with the Arts Council of Australia, had uh, held a competition for a grant, which I was lucky, well, uh, I got, and, um, and, and, and that was an enormous encouragement for me. And the brief was basically do what you like. So I had to really think what I liked, and that was a bit tricky at the time. Uh, then I have, after I'd done the, the drawings, I had some, several people, an author, author friend of mine, Susan Duncan, suggested I contact uh, an, a, a person I hadn't met, a publisher called, um, uh, uh, there I go, Fiona Henderson, who basically gave me three book deals off, off, the, bat, off the bat. And then um, with a firm press in Melbourne, <coughs> where, and, and, and I feel very, very much at home in, with a firm press. And I have my editor, Claire. Claire, there she is there. And if you want a good editor, you can't have her. She's taken, she's busy. <laughs> um, Claire and I have had the best, I have the best collaboration in my whole working career, then I, I've never had a better one with Claire. I've just, and this is the second time I've met her. And, 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 um, and my wife's here, but I sort of love Claire too, Marie, I'm sorry. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, of course the CBCA who dedicated, uh, who, are, who, de who is dedicated to the culture and the improvement of Australian children's literature. By these awards, the CBCA has raised the standards and improved the quality of books since it was formed way back up when I was four. <laughs> Finally, thanks to all those people who understand the importance and joy to be had in reading stories for their little ones, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gwyn. So our next award is the Eve Pownell Award for Information Books. These books have the prime purpose of documenting factual material, but deliver it with imaginative presentation, interpretation and a variation of style. Our announcer today is Barney Phillips Hughes, a Year 7 student at Iona College in Wynnum. Barney loves to read and last year his father lost him in the British Library. <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately, he was found again, tucked in the corner with a book on World War II. So welcome, Barney. Um, the shortlist is 
Idan, Ben Barrack and illustrator Julian Frost for Do Not Lick This Book, published by Alan and Unwin. John Dickin and Australian illustrator ben Bern Emmerichs for M is for Mutiny, History by Alphabet, published by Burbay Publishing. <laughs> Lorna Hendry for Left and Right, published by Wild Dog Books. <laughs> Charles Hope for The Big Book of Antarctica, published by Wild Dog Books. Prue and Kerry Mason and illustrator Tom Jellett for Amazing Australians in Their Flying Machines, published by Walker Books Australia. Claire Saxby and illustrator Julie Vivas for Koala, published by Walker Books Australia. And the award for honour book goes to Lorna Hendry, Left and Right, published by Wild Dog Books. And the second award for Honor Book goes to Claire Saxby and illustrator Julie Vivas, Koala, published by Walker Books Australia. Um, would we be able to get the um, Walker Books Australia publisher up here? Please? <laughs> And the winner of the Eve Pownall Award is Edan Ben Barrack and illustrator Julian Frost for Do Not Lick This Book, published by Alan and Unwin. Thank you very much. Mindful of the time passing, I'll try to keep this short. Uh, first and foremost, we would like to thank our collaborator, uh, Linnea Rundgren, for agreeing to take on a decidedly odd project with two people she'd never met until long after the book was published, and producing the breathtaking microscopic images that are the visual core of this book. Thank you to Julian's dentist, who extracted the tooth Linnea photographed, and to Linnea's ex-boyfriend, who donated the skin. Voluntarily, we are assured. We'd also like to thank Anna McFarlane and the gang at Alan Unwin for their professionalism and unflagging enthusiasm right from back when the book was nothing more than a weird title. Claire Forrester, our literary agent at Curtis Brown, for getting the book off the ground in the first place. Daniel Ben Barak, age 10, and Sam Bird, age slightly older, for important feedback and copywriting services. And Finally, to the Children's Book Council of Australia and the judges of this category, Julian, Linnea, and myself all arrived in Australia from three different continents, and we're really happy to have made something that's gone down so well with kids in this country that is now our home. Thank you all very much. I think that was on behalf of both of them. So thank you very much. And isn't it um, a tribute to this country that we have somebody from three, or the creators from three different continents happily working on the one book and winning a book in the Australian Children's Book Council Awards. So congratulations to you all. 
So we move now to the Crichton Award for New Illustrators. This award aims to recognise and encourage new talent in illustration for children of any age, zero to 18. There are, there are no honour books in this category and our award announcer is Xavier Rich, a student at St Ignatius School, Tuwong. Xavier loves reading fact and fiction and he says he appreciates how important the illustrator's interpretations are, not just for beginner readers finding their way for a text, but for him as well, and for all of us indeed. The shortlist is Patrick Shervington for Can You Find Me? published by New Frontier Publishing. <laughs> Heidi McKinnon for I Just Ate My Friend, published by Alan and Unwin. <laughs> Philip Bunting for Mopoke, published by Omnibus Books. Christopher Nielsen for Once Upon an ABC, published by Little Hair. <laughs> Vivian Tu for The Sloth Who Came to Stay, published by Alan and Unwin. <laughs> and Ravina Kay for Tintinabula, published by Little Hair. And the winner is Ravina Kay for Tintinabula, published by Little Hair. So uh, it's an absolute honour to be here today. Thank you so much. Oops. Thank you so much to the uh, Children's Book Council of Australia and to this year's judges for recognising my work. So when I was a kid, I used to actually choose books to read based on the CBCA stickers on the covers. Like I would only read the books that had the stickers on them. So um, to be here today is quite surreal. Um, as an illustrator, I get to work on a range of different projects from book covers to posters to product illustrations, but my dream has always been to illustrate a picture book. For some reason though, I always thought that was something that I'd have to work my way up to, like that I wouldn't start thinking about until 10 or 20 years into my career. So when I was asked to illustrate Tintinabula, I was absolutely thrilled, but also shocked that I would get to work on my dream job so soon. I've gotten to know so many wonderful people throughout the process of illustrating this book and had the chance to learn about image making, storytelling, and the whole world of publishing. And it's been an amazing experience. So now, um, to now be recognized with this award is just the icing on the cake. I would like to thank Margrethe Lamond, whom I had the pleasure of working with on the book. Her guidance and vision brought the illustrations to life. And of course, I wouldn't be here without Margot Lanigan's beautifully haunting words. They were the driving force behind the illustrations. My thanks also to Hannah Jensen, who did the lovely design work, and to Alison O'Brien and everyone else at Little Hair Books. And lastly, I would like to commend all the other shortlisted artists. The lineup of work was stunning and varied, and I'm so incredibly honored to be a part of this fantastic group. Thank you all. Thank you, Vicky, very much for presenting those awards for us. It was a great honour for us to have you with us. Could I just ask you all to give a special thank you again to the children who announced the winners today. Perhaps they could all come up on the stage and we could have a special photograph of them. It's not an easy thing to do in a room uh, full of mostly adults, 
Um, it's hard enough for adults who are not used to public speaking, and I think they all did a wonderful job. you. Thank you very much again. And it is wonderful to see so many children here today because that's really, isn't it, what it's, what it's all about. So thank you all. And that brings us to the end of the 2018 CBCA Book of the Year Awards. I want to thank all our creators and all those who've contributed to this award event and everyone here today. Thank you for your attendance. In particular, I want to thank the Queensland branch of the CBCA who've organised such a wonderful award ceremony and deserve the thanks from all of us. So I hope you can all join us on the Queensland Terrace next door for refreshments, purchase of the wonderful books we've celebrated today and to talk with the authors and illustrators. Thank you all.